was so scared, petrified, and it really literally shows on the screen also. This particular shot in the beginning, when I had to say, I don't know, and I had to raise my hand, because nowadays, uh, newcomers are taught, you know, they, you know, when the dance master tells you, raise your hand, do this, do that, everything. But then he said, no. And then later on, I realized when he told me, he said, I purposely not call for anyone to tell you. You must evolve your own style. You're an actor. For any newcomer, it's very important that he must do it himself. Why? Because if you do it with any dance master, you're going to ape some other hero. Because some other hero the other has done with that dance master. You must be able to, you know, talk. I guess this was such a great lesson for me. Thereby, I was never ever scared singing songs. I was very nervous, of course, the first day. But then I was never ever, you know, nervous or scared. I thought, you know, that was a great lesson for me. Or for the matter of fact, any newcomer. What about Jhoot Bole Kavva Kaate, in that he made you dance vigorously? Yes, Bobby, you see, Bobby was a different film. It had a lot of uh, fun, a lot of, you know, youthful fun. And um, I remember we did a lot of uh, rehearsals, six, eight days of rehearsal, both Dimple and myself. And uh, there was this particular moment, I should really freak out on. And came the day of the shooting, and I just did two rehearsals and I sprained my foot. And my father was livid. He was absolutely livid. He said, who told you to do so many rehearsals? Who told you to do? And you know, being newcomers, we wanted to work hard, we wanted to get in, you know, involved. And then I just could not do the shot because I had sprained my foot. I just couldn't do it. That's why there's a cut. I mean, I know about, I know the, the fact uh, that I take off doing that uh, skipping movement and then comes in a very close effect because we had to do it later. We could never do it after that. I had sprained my foot. Did you ever see him in his uh, sittings, story sittings? Would he welcome a star in or was it Yes, close? yes, he always wanted everyone to be involved. He always wanted his uh, actors to be absolutely involved. Like I said, he used to pamper his students, just like children. Because I'm sure being an actor, he knew what it was all about. Mm -hmm. And he always wanted his... Uh, like I used to really be seriously not in Prem Rock time. I didn't know much about doing Bobby. You can tell us how he sometimes got a tune for a song. Or I don't know about, uh, about this man, but he somehow the other knew any, everything. He just, uh, he would be inspired, totally obsessed by his film. Totally obsessed, involved in it. Each time trying to better it, thinking about it, talking to us about it, talking to his wife about it. And uh, probably wanting, you know, wanting to project it as uh, close to his heart because a lot of his own personal experiences are in the film. Because like, if you remember in Bobby, First time Dimple is uh, introduced in the film, she opens the door and she sees me, there's some music played and then she says, uh, whom do you want to meet? And she says, uh, uh, Auntie here, I call Auntie. And she, you know, first she does that, she's got that basin on her hand and she puts it over her head, she strains her hair. This was actually, it happened with my father. When he first wanted to uh, sign Nargis Ji, he, uh, he met Nargis Ji the same way. What about the love at first sight scene? Where you see her in the first time in your yes, house. Yes, yes. I mean, what was that all about? Can you talk about that? Well, that was in a screenplay form. That wasn't really what he... Uh, but it uh, happens when you see... When you see a very attractive girl, you, you feel attracted towards her. And because that was the first time I think the boy ever got love from, from any kind of family anyone was. This, this family, the Briganza family. Uh, how about your own girlfriends you might have had? Was he tolerant about them or was he strict yeah, about yeah. them? Yeah, he was very cool. Well, like, <laughs> he, yeah. well, yeah, of course, because he's always, he always had girlfriends. And, uh, you know, this is a very funny thing. Uh, my, probably my elder brother and my younger brother were very friendly with him. But somebody, I was never friendly with my father. I was very scared of him. Just out of respect. But, you know, I just could not communicate. I could not be a friend, you know. I don't know how to explain it. A son who's friendly with his father. There's always this kind of uh, transparent wall. I could never reach him. Like what about could you, the first time he caught you smoking or having a drink, were these kind of things? You'd be surprised. <clears throat> I got married, I was a father, and yet I never smoked or drank in front of him. For the fact I don't smoke anymore anyway. I wish uh, I would have left smoking when he was living. He was always against uh, my smoking. 
he used to, because he had to give up himself. And then he realized how bad it was. And I, and I sincerely tell you, tell all my viewers also that smoking is very bad. My father was also against it. And he developed all his problems because of smoking also. And I lost my father, a great filmmaker, because of smoking. Like I was saying, um, I never smoked or drank in front of him. He always wanted his sons to drink in front of him, but I could never do it. Why? It was just pure out of respect. I just could not do anything in front of him. I was in awe of him. Or I, just, I just couldn't do anything. Did he ever hit you? Once I was, when I was very young, I was told, and I, 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 there was this makeup man, and he was going to a shoot, and uh, he was smoking. I took his cigarette and I wanted to smoke it, and he got very angry. He got very, very angry. Well, I, I think he spanked me. I don't really remember. I think he did. Yes, he did. And I remember once uh, there was this incident when uh, um, I, w I was at a party. I, my parents were there as well. And I got a little affection. I was a little high. I got a little affection with my mother. And uh, my father was in there. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to reach, reach to him. But somehow I just couldn't pick up those guts. And you know, I couldn't just reach out to him. And uh, I left home. After they had left that party, they had left earlier. <clears throat> I used to, in those days, uh, share my toilet with my father. The same. We didn't have one. You know, we had a common toilet. So I don't know what must be psychological or what happened. So before, before I went to Lou and I wanted to uh, come back to my room, and I suddenly got into his room, and I used to sleep on. He used to always sleep on the ground, and I got in bed with him, and I embraced him, and I went to sleep. And he, uh, next morning, I got to know that he took off my shoes, my socks, and you know, he felt very nice that my son is, you know, at last he's, you know, he's shown some kind of affection towards me. And then when I woke up at about 6, 6.30 in the morning, something was, you know, shaking. My, my father always woke up at about 6 in the morning to have a glass of juice or something. When I suddenly woke up, and I saw the boss is shaking. I just turned the other way, and I saw my father there. I said, oh my God, how did I get into his bed? <laughs> me, I get into his bed. How did I reach out? I don't know, I didn't see him for three days after that. But um, this thing I'll never forget of my father. He was very sentimental. Yes, he was. I mean, a filmmaker, an actor has to be that. He has to be emotional, sentimental. His work always showed it. What do you think about his end? He was very particular about traditions also. Traditionally bound, like, you know, we had those uh, regular festivals at the Arca Studios. He was very, uh, you know, like a very staunch believer in these things. God fearing. We had a Ganesh Chaturthi, as everybody knows. We always celebrated the studio. The Holi Festival was always a very popular event in the Ark Studios. Because the Holi was all about romance and music and dancing. You know, it's part of what we were doing in our, our, our film business. And uh, he did a lot for his workers also as well. Because he was himself a worker. He loved parties. Showman that he was. I mean, he, he felt always that we people must, we belong to the people, to the masses. Why shouldn't we? Do you think he has a lot of imitators in style and in filmmaking? And why not, if he does? And why not? I'm sure uh, he also must be inspired by somebody at his time. Uh, I really don't remember, but I'm sure he... People said that he uh, was inspired by Charlie Chaplin in his acting. But then, uh, well, I, yeah, I should imagine, yes, he, did, he was. But then there were moments which were very, uh, there were moments about that man which were very personal and individual. I, I do recollect certain scenes in Jiddesh Manga Bhati Hai, in Andaz, and in Sangam, Anadi for that matter of fact, <clears throat> where he was different. Different in the sense that there was some kind of individual. Uh, so, there was something about that man originality. Originality, yes. Otherwise, uh, filmmaking was, I think, was a very individual style. He was, of course, very much inspired by Mehboob Sahab and uh, I forget the other one. Mehboob Sahab was particularly with Mehboob Sahab. Gurudat Sahab also, of course. What kind of films did he like? Did he recommend any to you to see? He seldom saw films. He always saw films of makers he liked and appreciated because he felt that we were not making films. He liked Hollywood films, right? Well, no, for the matter of fact, he liked Indian films. He liked, uh, he liked all kinds of films. He was a, basically liked films, he was a film man. 
the fact that uh, he never saw the contemporary cinema, what we were, what I was working in, why? Because some of you, I was very scared that he should see my kind of films. He'll, you know, <laughs> blow me up and say, what kind of films are you working in these days? But I guess um, you have to flow with time, and he also understood that this is what is being made, and that's that is what exactly Rajku was different than the others. Do you think it's that because some people have think misconstrued that he was only interested in showing sex and that kind of thing? Don't you think this is wrong? Because Ram Teri Ganga Meli wouldn't have run just on sex. Well, if that if films run only on sex, then Satyam Shivam Sundaram should have been the biggest hit of Arkay Studios, which was never the fa never the, so the case. Ganga had something more rustic about it. Had story element. It had some uh, uh, some identification also. And I do not believe in. Uh, where <laughs> you display a lot of body, a film can run on that. It certainly can't. What I have a film, I'm making a film, my father's last film, which uh, my brother and myself, my younger brother also, all of us are making. It's called Hina. It was his last endeavor. He had worked on the, com the subject, recorded three songs. He had even um, uh, scouted locations. He worked on his lot of things, which is more or less ready. We'll be making that film, and uh, I feel I don't know. I, I have this very strong feeling that there is some external force or external guidance that man is giving us in making this film. I hope we can do what he really wanted to do. It's a great subject, a great idea, a great film. Unity between Hindus and Muslims, and uh, it's a great love story. You think the R.K. banner can ever die? Unless until we don't really pick up from where he's left. I mean, it's, 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 I'm being very honest with you. I, for one, will not look back in the sense I definitely want to do. But then everybody cannot be a Raj Kapoor. What about the studio? It's going to stay, isn't it? Of course, of course, it is going to stay. We are filmmakers, we'll always be making films. What do you think about his end? Was it typical of him? Would he have liked to go out that way? I'm sure, yes. <clears throat> Just repeat very, that. Very typical, why? Because he told the world for a whole month that he was going. He entered the hospital on the 2nd of May and expired on the 2nd of June. And that too, when he was being given the highest honor, Dalsai Palke Award, that also in Delhi. There was so much of curiosity, anxiety, all over the world, everywhere. And the showman that he was, he fought. He fought like a brave warrior. But I guess things did not go right. I'm sure he's up there. He must be making. He must be trying to make a. Thinking great things, but um, <laughs> I really don't know. The last meeting with my father was I was going to Kathmandu. This was on the 30th of April. We had an uh, evening uh, together, the family, and there was a gentleman outside. We were entertaining some people. And I had an early morning flight, and I had to leave early. So I had, a, I had my dinner. And now I remember that last look which he gave me. He was wearing black. I mean, in retrospect, now I, I see this with my point of view. He just saw me and I saw him, and then I sat in the car. That was the last time I saw him in the sense when he was. Then of course, I met him in the hospital. He saw me, looked at me, blinked at me. And uh, there was this time when he was going into coma, a very serious, uh, I mean, this was just, when the end was coming near. In the night, uh, people are trying to talk to him because the patients react when they are getting into coma or they could come out of it. And uh, some of the other, I went and uh, I uh, sat with him and uh, just talking to him, I was talking about nonsense. So. <laughs> I was telling him that uh, you better become all right, you're going to be the next uh, ambassador to China from India. And I said, no, come on, side time. Get out of it. We all, we all giving a lot of problem now. Why don't you get out of it? I liked what Mr. Dilip Kumar also had to say to my father. He, uh, 
he came to see him in the hospital and he said, uh, he had just been into Pakistan and he said that, uh, come on Raja, you better get up, I had some lovely kawars there. And you've always been a showman, always been a show off. Now come on, don't show off so much, don't have to be in the bed. Come on, get out of it. But then he never did. He said, you know, what did he think of you as an actor? Did he ever tell you you were lousy or good? I don't know if I should say so, but uh, I would be... Uh, my father liked me a lot as an actor. He, he always told me one thing that you talk with your eyes. You speak with your eyes. And that's the greatest weapon an actor can have. I'm not talking big about myself, but my father used to tell me this. Okay, last question. Without Krishna Ji's support and strength, would Raj Kapoor have been anywhere? I think my father, my father had great strength in my mother. <clears throat> she supported him all through a lot of ups and downs. And like that very famous saying, behind every successful man, there's always a woman behind. And like, my mother was, uh, has gone through a lot with him, but she stood by. And she stood by even the last moment. There could be no Raj Kapoor without her. I think so. Okay. Thanks.